What's up, guys? Welcome into another episode of the Out of Our Minds podcast. It's Nikki and Bella here. We're so excited and so grateful that you're here. I actually want to take a second to really express our gratitude that you're here, that you're listening, you're taking the time out of your day, out of your week to work on your consciousness, to just be in this space because it really is no small thing. These conversations that we're having, the things that we're all going through and working through is pretty amazing to honestly be spending our conscious time and effort on these things. So I just want to give you a shout out uh, for being here and especially for this type of episode, which I'm really excited about this topic. It's something that I, I just care about the topic a lot. I get really excited and fired up about it. And it was really, you know, the things we're going to talk about and bring into sort of this exact present moment context were topics that were actually really important part of my like initial awakening in a way that happened in 2020. And so it's interesting because I feel it's very full circle where, you know, 2020 was the infamous year of the pandemic and an election and just all this craziness, right? And it caused a lot of us to awaken And now we're here four years later and it feels like it's almost like another like cycle in a way where yes, there's like another election and we're addressing that as a context because I think there's no denying that these, you know, big cultural, societal, whatever you want to call them, topics and conversations and almost like collective things that we go through they affect us in some way or another, whether it's through our relationships and friendships, work things, what's on the media, right? How we are processing the information. And today we're hoping to bring to you a conversation that will help to number one, give you some really important reminders about the bigger picture here, right? The macro level of what, or really how to navigate these times and these times meaning like bringing a conscious approach to politics, culture, identity, like discourse, division, right? Propaganda, like all these things that are a part of our 3D world. And that honestly, a lot of these machines, if you will, contribute to our awakening and to the way that we reclaim our power. So we're going to get into, into all of that. But one thing I will say to preface is this is a conversation where you really root down and keep an open heart and an open mind. And you really just let the conversation flow, listen with curiosity, with openness. And I want to say right off the bat that at least my intention is I'm never really trying to like quote unquote convince you of something. I know that I'm not necessarily designed via my human design to be like quote unquote opinionated. So my point here is actually more to voice a perspective and a lens on life that has helped me and that I've seen help others to have a better experience with these things in life that can very quickly make life and relationships sticky and frustrating and really not rooted in love and wholeness and all these wonderful things that we work on within the comfort of our own heart. And now we're bringing out to, you know, the world. So one place I want to start is kind of giving like a, I guess like a context, if you will, on how I think about, I guess I'll just be blatant. Okay. Basically some of the underlying, I guess, philosophy or approach that I personally have or that I think makes sense in terms of like elections and politics and like power structures and governments, if you will. And it's just to say that I think a huge part of this awakening journey is reclaiming the power that we actually give away to people that even if they have good intentions or whether they do or whether they have good intentions or not, we are really taught in our life to give away that power, meaning somebody's going to come in and save us. Somebody else has the solution and therefore we need to make sure that they win the election so that they can solve the problems for us. And I'm not saying that there aren't good hearted leaders out there, yada, yada, yada. However, there's a very important 
dynamic to understand of at least so you know where I'm coming from is so much of what we talk about on this podcast and so much of what it is to have an awakening is a reclamation of your power, a reclamation of your role in creating your own reality. To that end, any place that you are giving away that power because of fear or lack or whatever it might be, that is something to look at. And I think that the more we reclaim that power, and a lot of this has to do with not fusing your identity and sense of self to these external metrics, which we'll get into, it will be a lot easier to navigate things like an election or political discourse or cultural topics that there's a lot of, you know, division around or differing opinions. A lot of that is easier when you've applied the work that you're doing just in yourself of reclaiming your power from a relationship or work or success or whatever it is. And you're saying, you know what? I, that's my role. It's my role to choose what happens in this reality. And when individuals wake up to that, that's the new earth. That's the revolution is on an individual level, people having an effect on the entire collective from an empowered place instead of handing off the key of the solution to somebody else out there. There's a time and place for that because there's a reason why we have leaders. There's a reason why we have people who organize things, whatever. But I just want to put that out there that a big theme of this is we create our power from within. We are freeing ourselves and we create the change. And I want you to really chew on that and think about it because that is where we really easily, without realizing it, give our power away to an external structure And that is how we are unconsciously falling into lack and fear because we are gripping for certainty. And somebody says, hey, I'm going to solve this for you. And what we know is a lot of times they're not of the highest intention, right? There's a lot of negative power dynamics going on. So I just want you to really feel into that. To that end, I want to start with this point and read. Actually, Nikki, I'll let you um, say anything that's coming up for you. But I want to read this carousel of posts that our friend Angela posted that is so spot on and so beautiful. And I think it's going to like inspire a lot of subtopics off this conversation, but I'll let you share anything first. I don't know why I'm like panting right now. (laughs) I mean, you just spoke a lot. Yeah. There's big messages coming through today. And I even told Bella before we started recording this, I'm like, you take the reins with this episode because I know this has been such a huge part of your journey. And I just want to add in little points that come through as you're speaking. And one of the points that came through when you were just sharing is that it's funny to actually reflect on <clears throat> like how we give our power away to these leaders. And like if someone is rooting for one side and then they don't win, it's almost like people just like throw in the towel and right. they're like, oh, well, this world sucks and this is happening in this way. And it's like always looking at what is going wrong instead of remembering that we're literally all creating this reality by what we focus on and what we believe. And I just want to remind you guys that this episode is coming out after the election, right? Like at this point, we don't even know, we don't even know who won when when we're recording this, but it doesn't matter because this message applies to both sides. Yeah. At all times. At all times. yeah. Yeah. And this is everything we're speaking about today is, is, definitely something that I'm still like practicing on a daily basis because I can notice when I'm having those like knee jerk reactions to like maybe look at someone's opinions and be like, what, how can they think that? Like, look at all of this. But Bella has been such a light in me understanding everything we're about to dive into today. And it truly is so liberating when we remember the bigger picture and we zoom out And I think it's so important to not get lost in the sauce of like the distraction of just pointing fingers at other people. Yes. And this is why, Mm -hmm. like I see learning all of this and kind of taking this to the next level of like the oneness and the love as like walking through that gateway of understanding that like there is no more time to add to the divide. Like when you see someone who has a different opinion than you, and I'm sure we'll get into this in greater detail Like now is the time to harness into like a deeper form of love. And I'm sharing this from a place of like, I am still actively practicing this in my own journey. And I want to share that it's okay if you have like those knee jerk reactions to like want to divide further or to like 
convince someone that what they're thinking isn't quote unquote right because it's literally how we are conditioned like think about the way that we're conditioned even when we're younger and like the way they teach us about politics and it's like us versus them and we're always in this like battle where it's literally like my husband said when he moved to America he's like your politics are like sports and I'm like no it literally is it's just another form of entertainment for people right. and it's so kind of like it's like a mind fucked mind fuck in a way to remember that we're all just creating our own reality and you can choose to like subscribe to a reality that is more of like a heaven on earth for you and mm -hmm. these are the times where it's like you are so tempted to like go mm -hmm. back into the darkness and yes. the divide but it's just like grounding into that regulated nervous system and reminding yourself that you have a choice and I'm excited to dive into this topic today because I think we don't know that there's another choice until we have these conversations right exactly yeah one thing I want to add before I read the carousel post from Angela is I was saying to Nikki how you know the past few years for example on Instagram we've all been like following new people and discovering new creators or astrologers and people in this space and that we're like wow cool love them love their work whatever and then we get back into the season of people who feel called to share their like viewpoints let's say about culture and and politics and whatever online all of a sudden we are seeing a new flavor of this totality of the person online. And I know, I just know that so many of us are like, oh shit, I followed them for their fitness, but they just expressed this opinion that I disagree with unfollow. I mean, that's like the biggest trope and listen, we've all done it. I'm not shaming anyone for doing that. I'm pointing out a thing that we do when we think, We've painted one picture of a person and we've said, yes, I like you. You're cool. You have this great thing that you make nice art. You could make good workout classes. But now I found out a detail about you that I don't like. I'm done with you completely. And when mm. I describe it like that, you're probably seeing like, oh yeah, that, I guess that's like a little extreme or whatever. And again, I'm going to stop. There's only, I always try to add fucking a million caveats, but I'm just going to let you guys fill in the blanks and I'm not at all pretending that I'm going to cover the entire nuance of this topic. So I'm just going to keep speaking and stop giving fucking caveats. Um, but yeah, this is a time when it's like, that's literally happening is this is when we embody and bring the rubber to the road of all the people that we have, you know, fallen in love with of like new community, new friends, new, whatever in a time where there was maybe less political discussion. I mean, there were still things being shared and obviously current events happening, of course, but it's a bit of a different degree where there's seasons that it really rises. And this is why we're talking about it because the next iteration of awakening is to notice when we are very quickly falling into a conditioned uh, pattern mm. of othering people. It's a very tribal hardwired in some ways pattern and thing that we do when we see something about someone else that triggers our physical body and we associate that with not being safe why it comes back to the nervous system because you think it's a threat because when you lived in a tribe it was really crazy to like stand up and be a heretic and say something point something out that was different from the group sometimes they would kick you out because we were at a lower level of consciousness and we didn't understand that it was okay to actually talk about it we are mm -hmm. trying to move out of that almost like primal you know program that's in us and is also yeah. being reinforced to us by the media, right? And I'll say the mainstream media, which it's almost like, I feel like I don't even have to explain how the mainstream media is like very propagandized and is like trying to fulfill an agenda, right? But it's worth restating. Like these are things that we've discovered over time. There's a lot of evidence for this. Of course, I could be wrong. However, there is a lot to show us that people who are creating these narratives are smart in the sense that they know what happens when people are in fear. So point mm -hmm. being, this is why it's coming up. This is why we're going to face the shadow within ourselves as a collective, as this community is the people we've connected with and seeing a perspective they share and seeing that pattern, that hardwired thing come up. That's like, oh, no more from this person. I thought that they were different. And yeah. this is also why I think it's, you know, all of you listening, like I know you've connected with us in some way and I'm not someone who really shares like explicit political opinions all the time online. I used to do it a lot. And then I realized it wasn't 
it was sometimes coming from an ego place, but even if I did, you know, just think about how, look at the topics we're talking about this podcast. I'm not here to say like, I'm this good person. You can trust me, but ask yourself like what attracted me to Bella in the first place? How come I feel a resonance with her? Just like any friend, right? They're a good friend. They show up for me. They help me through my emotions and feelings. And then you see a shadow side to them. Would you want somebody else to judge your entirety off of a shadow that came out? Not Mm -hmm. even a shadow, just a part that they decided they didn't like, or they judged because they thought it was wrong. And we don't even know if it's actually a shadow, right? So that's like, these are the new like mental muscles and like frameworks that I think is what this whole conversation is meant to enlighten, to inspire and help us to think about. Cause I really see it as like the next freaking level of like spiritual truth and spiritual embodiment is applying it in the places that are really fucking hard. And we don't want to like yeah. accept this thing that we don't like about a person, but like that is ultimate oneness and love and compassion is seeing that humanity in your enemy which is fucking hard to do, but people have done it, right? If you want to know a good example of that, there's the book Man's Search for Meaning, which I'm pretty sure I referenced, where mm. um, Viktor Frankl, who lived, who was in a, uh, what's it called? A concentration camp. Constant. Literally yeah. writes about like having compassion for his captor, which is fucking hard. And I'm not going to pretend that I maybe would even be able to do that. I don't know if it's right or wrong. There's different opinions on that, but it's possible. And people talk about how it's liberating. So, yeah. Even when you're just sharing that, I had this whole like realization, actually, when you were here, um, one of the nights that we had a sleepover and I was just like laying in bed and kind of feeling a little bit like there was like some darkness Mm. in the room and I was like feeling a little bit spooked out. Um, I had this moment of thinking about how even like when you go into like the whole conspiracy world of like Hollywood and like even political figures and you look at these political figures and you're like, Oh my God, like they are the darkness, like they are evil. But what I'm learning in this book, bringers of the dawn is that darkness is literally just the absence of light. It is taking the knowing of what someone truly is and removing that from them and kind of like hypnotizing them, mm. hypnotizing them with um, truths that are for like that person's benefit as opposed to for the collective benefit. And if you think mm. about like anyone in Hollywood that has like quote unquote sold their soul, they are just in the darkness because they are not aware of their own light. Right. And they've been like hypnotized in a way to they're like, hey, like come over here and we're going to give you all the money in the world. You're going to have all of this fame. And then they kind of like sign a contract over to receive that fame, the money, the platform. And little do they know there's like a fucking puppeteer mm. pulling the strings. But it's another level of our awakening to recognize that even these humans that we see, they are not the ones that we should be hating. Right. And nor is even the level up, because when you look at it from like that higher perspective and you like connect to the creator, everything has its divine place. And there actually is no light without the darkness. Right. And there's this like beautiful ecosystem that's always balancing each other out with the powers that are at play. And I think inviting that in to the experience that we are currently having with the elections and everything that's like transpiring in the month of November, which is like Mm -hmm. this intensity. It's just like another reminder that like when you harness into your own light, it doesn't matter what people believe. It doesn't matter their opinions because your light activates their light. And when Mm -hmm. we're judging I'm like sharing this message with myself too. It's like when we're judging and we're pointing fingers and being like, how could this person have this opinion? Like, how could they not see what's in front of them? It's like, I may be in the dark with my own things that I'm just not even seeing and like Mm. harnessing into my own compassion and love for another person is how we both will activate each other into deeper levels of remembering. So these are just like the realizations I'm having as you're speaking of like, it almost seems silly like when we're when we're tapped in and we're recording this message and we're 
opening our channels, I just keep getting like that. Duh. Like you can have love and compassion for these people or like no one knows yeah. what they don't know. And like, I'm sure there's moments right. where people hold compassion for me because I don't know something that they know. And there's all yes. these little aspects of ourself that are in the darkness. And it's through loving people and seeing them as the soul that they are, that they awaken to that own light within them. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm this conversation is already crushing. I'm very excited to keep going. <laughs> okay. So jazzed. I'm going to read. <laughs> <laughs> it's lit up in here. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to read this amazing carousel from her handle is a tuning forks. A T T U N I N G forks. Her name's Angela Doss. She is an incredible woman. I met her. I don't can't remember if I met Angela in person or not, but I got connected to her through the health freedom community on Instagram a few years ago. And she's just a great person to follow. Like she has such a great way of bringing perspective and compassion, but also just like good old truths to you. And I just really appreciate the way that she, yeah, speaks her mind, speaks her truth. She's a coach. She's also into, um, let me get this right. Cause I don't want to uh, transformational coaching and counseling, body, mind, blood sugar, food psychology, somatic psych PhD student. Very cool. So this is the post. Um, it says your capacity for resilience during this election season is directly related to your, your awareness that you and not they hold the power. Take a deep breath, put a hand on your heart and repeat aloud. It is safe for me to vote or not vote according to my values. Deep breath, take a deep breath, put a hand on your heart and repeat. It is safe for me to notice and be curious about the emotional, emotional patterns that arise when elections don't go my way. Deep breath. Take another breath, put a hand on your heart. It is safe for me to notice how and where I may be giving away my power and energy to elected officials rather than attending to, strengthening, and empowering myself and the relationships that truly nurture and support me. It is safe for me to reclaim the power I have wittingly or unwittingly bestowed upon others. It is safe for me to question the integrity of both elections and election officials, sorry, elected officials. It is safe for me to see that the fate of all that is good in the world, as well as my own freedom and happiness, do not hinge perilously on the outcome of national elections. It is safe for me to realize that divisiveness and dehumanization aren't solved by voting in elections, but by humans like me who embody our values daily and with integrity. It is safe for me to consider that those who disagree with me politically may have good and relatable reasons for coming to the views they currently inhabit. It's safe for me to forgive myself for succumbing to election divisiveness and dehumanizing others for their political views and to commit to being better than my than this for myself and others. It is safe for me to prioritize values and boundaries based on meaningful human connection over my loyalty to any political party or ideal. It is safe for me to trust that living according to my values without imposing them onto others can and will create the highest good and healing for all. Um, very powerful messages in there. And then the last thing I'll read is just the caption on here. And then we can, uh, sort of riff on this, but so she says again, your capacity for resilience during this election season is directly related to your awareness that you and not quote unquote, they hold the power. Maybe elected officials can do some good. I tend to hope they can, but they aren't going to save us. Not even if they wanted to, they can't because it's we and not they who are actually in power and it's we and not they who decide what power we have. Does that mean you shouldn't vote? No. Does that mean you should vote? I don't know. That's up to you. But whether you're voting or not, let this election season be a reminder that how you spend your time, where you invest your energy, and where you direct your attention matters. It matters far beyond the outcomes of cutthroat, propaganda-ridden elections. When something throws us, like the outcome of a heated election, it's an opportunity to consider how we can more soundly and steadfastly embody our own values and boundaries. There's some more stuff in there. So definitely go follow Angela and check out this post and just, you know, dive into her work. But yeah, there's a lot of really, really good quotes in there. And I think it, 
honestly like summarizes a lot of what we're saying here, but I would love to know any like first thoughts that were coming through for you with those. I mean, the first slide I think really hit me. It's the regulated nervous system one, right? Can you repeat that Um, one? It says your capacity for resilience during this election season is directly related to your awareness that you and not they hold the power. And then what's the second one? Uh, it's take a deep breath, hand on your heart. It's safe for me to vote or not vote according to my values. Mm. Safe for me to notice and be curious about the emotional patterns that arise. Yeah. So that resilience aspect really stands out. And I guess I was mm-hmm. associating that with the regulated nervous system. Yeah. It's almost like we're hitting this point in our reality where things feel so intense Mm -hmm. that we're kind of like looking like how you were saying for that figure outside of us to just like come in and make sure that we're safe. But this is written in the stars, the transformation that we're all going through and that we're going through as a collective And if you think about Pluto going into Aquarius, I saw this TikTok of this guy talking about how most astrologers are kind of like watering this down when this is a really big freaking deal. And he was painting the picture of how big it is by saying the last time Pluto was in the sign of Aquarius was when America was created. (laughs) So this feels like our our foundation like our floor is being ripped out from under us Mm -hmm. and when we're in that sensation or that feeling even think about in moments of your own life we kind of like look for the savior and of course we can turn to leaders and guides and even coaches or books and they can be a light of course but if you think about those aligned really soul hitting resources they're always the things that remind you of your own power. And yes. that is the differentiating factor here is that old paradigm, we're looking for a leader to come save us. And new paradigm is we have a regulated nervous system in a way that we are with that discomfort and reminded by going through that, that we are our own saviors. And a mm-hmm. regulated nervous system and resilience, which I see like someone being resilient as their abil- their ability to be with discomfort without fighting or flighting or mm-hmm. all of the other options of what can happen when you're when your nervous system is activated. And when you have resilience, you're able to like ground into a deeper sense of your power because it's almost like the three D illusion wants you to think that you're about to die. <laughs> But if you have resilience and a regulated nervous system, you're tapped into that all-knowing, limitless, eternal energy that is the truth of who you are, where you remember, like you literally get a download of like, oh, if I don't like run to this person to just like save me and I put myself in this circle of people who are always reminding me of my own power and I do the work to remember my own power from within then you get that download of like, wait, I'm literally creating this whole freaking reality and there's nothing to actually fear. Yes. And that moment is so um, important. And I feel like that's what we're coming to with like Pluto going into Aquarius. I don't know the actual specifics of what the Aquarian energy is, but I know it's like a revolutionary vibe Mm. and when things are changing, I think this is an invitation for us to really shift our perspective on what is good versus bad. Mm -hmm. And maybe sometimes the things have to get a little bit shaken up or quote unquote worse before they get better. And in those moments, we're being asked to remember the power that we hold. And think about a time when you were like going through it in life, That was like the catalyst for you to remember, oh my fucking God, I am this powerful being that literally has God within me that can create their own reality. And I'm waking up to this fact that I can shape shift my reality based on my thoughts and emotions. I'm just using one awakening Mm -hmm. as an example of like going through that phase of being like, oh wow, like I am 
the the one playing the game i am the avatar in the game and i am you and you are me and we are all one and like that kind of awakening when you are able to sit with the discomfort that's evolution like that is how we are evolving mm-hmm. as a species and elections and these political like political discourse that arises during these times of like heightened energy the split happens because you see the people that are like oh no i need this person to come save me and like this is going to be the thing that saves me and then it's like you can choose to actually kind of like unsubscribe from that and go to the side where you're like i'm good and i remember having this realization over the past few elections of just like consciously thinking in my head i'm like good like i recognize that i actually can create my own safety from within no matter who wins and life doesn't have to be so like oh well everything's going in the shitter now it's like maybe what's happening is meant to happen and this is just an opportunity for us to remember our powers that we hold within yeah and i think what was coming up as you were speaking is it's like i can just I know that it's like what makes all of this easier is a very important concept about disentangling your identity from your viewpoints and especially from politics. And this is where you can hear Nikki and I say whatever we're saying about our perspective, our life, our whatever. And if you feel, uh, oh, what about this? Ah, what about this? I want to like, imagine listening to us and you wish you could call us up to tell us this other opinion. Okay. Cause that's like a sensation that you'll have is like, yeah, I wish I could tell them this thing. Cause then they should know. And then they'll change their mind. This is where all the things we're saying do not mean that you can't have like an opinion or a perspective, or you can't vote for a person and feel good about it. And actually all of those things are going to take their proper place and follow a proper process when you have removed your sense of self and who you are as a person from these ideas, opinions, and political groups and agendas. What that means is, again, this is a huge thing that a lot of us are trained to believe is how things work when we're younger or in high school or just like when we're sort of at that age that we're maybe hearing our parents share their political opinions and then they're maybe talking shit about the neighbor who voted for this person. And you're picking up this story that, oh, okay, the opinion I have and who I, you know, voice my support for in this context equates to whether or not I'm a good person. And this is the start of how we start to, in very micro ways, you know, people please do things for others because we don't want to be seen as a bad person. But this bubbles out to a scale where we are now adopting opinions and holding on to something. Imagine you are, you know, this, you, you don't know who you are. And so you're grabbing onto anything you can to feel like, oh, okay, I have this opinion. I'm good. I'm with this team. They're the right team. They're good people. I can feel okay about myself. That is the place that a lot of us are coming from when we then feel like, quote unquote, not safe in the body and talking about like a, like a physical state of like, oh, I'm like, you know, your monkey brain is like, I'm literally threatened right now. Even beyond, I would challenge to like certain narratives in the media that I think are trying to convince us that things are worse than they are. Okay. There's nuance here, but pay attention to how certain stories, we saw this in COVID, There is a purpose to fear mongering to make you think that you are not going to survive because then it supports you having an identity attached to this solution and this agenda that this person just happens to hold. And then it continues the cycle of division that is going to dissolve and become, you will, it will become second nature to you to practice these concepts of like open-mindedness and changing your mind and not, you know, othering people when you cut the tie of your sense of self from these opinions. And this is something that is very outlined in the book, Why Are We Yelling? The Art of Productive Disagreement by Buster Benson, which I did a, we'll link, I think there's going to be two really good companion episodes to this. One is, I think I did a solo on productive disagreement. And the second one where we talk about like 
the um collective shadow we watched like a documentary and we talked about it like it was like almost a year ago you can't fight darkness with more darkness yes i think that one and which i think is in like the the like first 10 episodes or maybe in yeah the, between 10 and 20 yes i think that's right so this concept of removing your identity is basically seeing how yeah it's just what i said of like we develop this idea that if we change our mind and we are wrong about something that all of a sudden we like don't know who we are and this is why i love spirituality because if you really embody the idea that first of all who you are as a person is so limitless and so multi-dimensional that it's actually absurd to pin your whole sense of self on like one school of thought. Like, yes, you can identify in this 3D world of being like, I love Eastern philosophy and I believe in this thing. Like, that's great. But I want us to arrive at those from a place of already being whole and not thinking that our goodness is based on our opinions and who we support. Because this is how, this is why we like other people and we get scared thinking like, oh, I thought they were a good friend, but they support this candidate. They must be dumb and a bad person and it's like hold the freaking phone guys our identity and who we are as people is not hinged on something so transient as a fucking opinion and a like school of thought like yes you can be really passionate about it and believe in it and defend it right i have plenty of opinions and things that i will defend and have so much fun debating over but i don't need them to feel good about who i am because i know that i'm whole I am. I just am here. I don't, it doesn't fucking matter. It's a mask, right? So watch how you pin your goodness as a person onto these things, because that is another aspect of like what's essentially dysregulating a nervous system. Because the second that that opinion is proved wrong, proved wrong, or you feel like you're the only one that has it, and you equate that to either I'm no longer a good person anymore, or they're a bad person. Like that's where we fall into division and othering and dehumanizing. And I think one of the easiest way to do this is just think about how on your spiritual journey, let's say you like went through a subconscious healing season and you used to hold this belief to your core, right? It was like wired in your brain and in your body. And for a time it was like totally your reality. And then you recognized it. You saw that maybe it didn't have to have a hold on you anymore. You want to choose a different reality and you shifted and you were able to let go of it. And part of that process was probably realizing your wholeness, your enoughness or whatever it is outside of that story. So if you can do that with shit that's like tied to like your emotions and your sense of existence, then you can do it with information and data and opinions and political discourse and Last night I was talking to my friend Cody about this and she said a quote that I wrote down. It's just from her that she said, um, if you can digest information and change your mind, that is one of the best qualities of a human being. And just saying that that ability to take in new information, just like you've done on your spiritual journey, where you thought one way of reality and then you're like, oh my God, I've been living a lie. (laughs) I've been living an illusion. You can do that with new information about our life and governments and culture and politics and all of the insanely nuanced amount of information that's out there rather than literally imagining like fusing yourself to it so tightly that if all of a sudden that's wrong, yeah, of course you're going to be triggered. Like that's, we all have that, right? I have things where, you know, if someone starts talking shit about people who podcast, yeah, I'm going to be aware of the fact that like, yeah, okay, it's like a little bit part of my identity, but I know that it doesn't matter because I'm infinite. It doesn't, I, there's no, I don't need to be attached to something so transient that's in my 3D world that ultimately is, you know, an illusion, right? It's just part of the game and it can change and, and flow. And who am I to say that I'm right and know all the information? So anyway, that was like a big riff on <laughs> identity and disentangling it from opinions. It's so true though. Like what you're saying about identity, when you identify as something that is like limiting your wholeness, you're going to feel so dysregulated the moment it's questioned. Mm -hmm. So that's why every spiritual teaching is always bringing you back to this truth of just like, you're good, you're whole. 
like literally right here in this very moment, you don't need anything to become more whole. There's actually no such thing as becoming more whole. You are a divine consciousness that is experiencing itself in this like human meat suit. And it's so interesting to think about how the most peaceful people in life are ones who are able to have a regulated nervous system without anything in their 3D being a specific way. Mm. And when you apply this to what we're talking about now, I'm realizing like when you put your identity on something in the 3D, of course, the second it's not that way or someone proves you wrong or something unravels in a way that isn't a preference to you, you're going to feel dysregulated because your sense of safety was dependent on that thing being a truth in your 3D. Mm. So this is why so many spiritual teachings will teach you about detachment and like understanding uh, your wholeness and like all of these beautiful Zen teachings and Michael Singer's teachings mm. on like knowing that the emotions are, are things that can be observed and you have this like p this wholeness within you that you can tap into at any given moment. And from that place, you're constantly practicing how to create safety where your feet are without needing anything changed in your 3D. And if you can imagine like you're standing on the 3D surface and you have roots coming from your feet going down into the earth, that is like the goal is to create that sort of sensation in your life always where you're walking around and every single step you're taking, you are rooted to the ground. And the illusion is that when you put your identity of like, oh, I only have roots coming from my feet and I feel safe when this happens or like your safety is conditional. Mm. And this is like kind of... um it's like unconditional love, but it's unconditional safety. When you recognize that your identity of like the true essence of who you are goes beyond anything in the 3D. And it's so normal to identify with specific things in your 3D mm -hmm. because it's kind of also like what we came here to experience yeah. of like this fun 3D life of like, yeah, like I'm a, I'm a podcaster, like I'm a coach, I'm a friend, I'm a wife, I'm a, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter. And it's fun but to not make it something that makes you feel unsafe right. when it's not as stable as what it once was. Yeah. Something I want to address too, because I can, I can just feel that someone is thinking this while they listen, is when we're talking about safety, there's sort of like two contexts of this. One is within this conversation of you know, discourse, discussions at Thanksgiving dinner, like talking about things, feeling like hearing the news, your bodily reaction to it. Then there is, of course, I think something that's honestly good to address is like, there are real, you know, issues and things that are happening in the world. And this conversation is not at all about denying that like, there are real circumstances when there are people that are experiencing a difficult situation. Now, with that being said, I believe that if we actually want to help people, liberate people, first of all, I understand the idea that some people are truly not living in a safe situation or a dangerous neighborhood, or there's a fucking active war zone going on. These are real things that are happening. So first of all, I want to say we are not saying <laughs> that there aren't times in life that there is a true, you know, threat, if you will. However, I would say as a collective humanity, the way for us to address those big issues needs to start to evolve where we are able to hold two truths at the same time. There's a problem here. There's this, I don't know, group of people, situation, current event, whatever you want to call it, that is not an ideal outcome. And we can address that. We can also say, we don't want to victimize people to a fault where we are playing into the narrative, because this is very common in the West, that plays on our fear and our identity and wants us to think that we are victims because what does a victim need? A savior. 
I need someone to come in and fix problems. And I think that we can hold these truths at the same time and realize that this is actually all a consciousness and a way of thinking that is very solution oriented because now that we have tended to our own consciousness and we are doing the work and we are realizing that as individuals, that is what changes things, right? Like Angela said, we, the people literally, right, are like the ones who are creating this reality while there are also situations happening, yada, yada, yada. We are going to come up with better solutions and create a better earth when we are in that place of wholeness and we can bring, you know, forth solutions and conversations that are not happening out of being, you know, like we're saying, completely dysregulated or just identifying with, you know, a transient opinion. So it's like, we should have conversations as a collective in the news, in the media, whatever, on fucking Twitter, whatever it is about real life problems. And, you know, this issue over here, we would like to help these people. There's this group that's really prone to poverty. What can we do over here? Okay. These are all very real things. However, I will refuse to buy into a narrative that says like we're hopeless and that there's people that are just fucked for lack of a better term. And I think we need to watch out for when we start to unnecessarily victimize people in a place of like so much pity to the degree that we are denying them their own power. Because I think we talked about this actually on another episode where we were like, if you are going through a hardship, like I want you to, if I was going through a hardship, I want somebody to like have compassion for me, but I also want them to be like, you fucking got this and you're going to be okay. I don't want someone to be like, poor you, your life sucks. You must really be like, like everything is bad for you. I don't even know if you're ever going to survive this. I think that is a consciousness that we slip into and we do it on a collective scale, in my opinion, because of the media propaganda that wants people to be in a victimized state so that then the savior can come in and, you know, push their agenda forward. I felt like this coming through. It feels stretchy to share, but I feel like it's important to address that because it's, this is how we like bring more nuance and hold more perspective and I can have multiple truths at the same time. And I think things would really shift the more that we all remember that inherent power And no matter what your circumstance is, like this is so tied to like subconscious healing work and subconscious freedom work is to know that like you can have a circumstance that's very real, that was very tough. And you can remember that you are fucking divine and infinite and can create whatever reality you want. Why are the uh, the, the fucking they powers that be, whatever, which I hate that term. They're not fucking teaching us that. Okay. And I just want us to remember that's the next level. Like it's hardest to apply it in those situations, but that's why it's so powerful. And I am convinced that that's like the new earth visions I keep getting is like the image of like us realizing we don't need to fucking fight it out and be divided. We need to like remember the internal power that we all hold. And that is what is going to actually change things, right? Regardless of who wins, regardless of this group or that group or their agenda, or if they're perfect or they're not perfect candidate, or they said this in the ba- in the past, whatever, like we still are able to change reality. And I'm not ever going to buy into a reality that says I'm powerless and I'm at the whims of what somebody else does or says, even at the most extreme, you know, end of it. Yeah. Wow, I agree with every single thing you're saying, and I know it is like a stretchy conversation to have, but to have, but I think it's a very important yeah. point to make. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot to speak this truth during these times, but it's so true. Like the one thing that we can do to help and spread peace in this world is to cultivate it from within ourselves. Yeah, and it does not help the cause to just be in a frantic fear-based state and to try and create change from the same consciousness that created the quote unquote problem. Mm -hmm. And it is so true that this ties in very deeply to the subconscious work because there's so many perspectives that we can view and experience from. And some of the most challenging moments in life are when we are faced with an experience where it feels a little bit more difficult to reach and pull in that higher perspective. But those are the moments 
that are catalysts for really deep change because if you can see the higher perspective when you're in the face of like chaos and challenge and a situation that most would be prone to feeling fear in, that is where you remember deeply who you are and to see everything that is happening in this world as one big opportunity to wake up to that power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you guys are feeling into this message and it really resonates with you and you listen to these episodes and they resonate with you, we create these really beautiful energy readings that we release monthly in our Omi's Oasis community membership. And the lowest tier of our membership is to have access to these really beautiful monthly energy readings. And right before we recorded this episode, we actually recorded our November energy reading. And it pretty much takes all of this insight and this beautiful wisdom that we are opening ourselves up to today with this episode and applying it on a very personal level. So if you're looking for a place where you want to like tap into that monthly energy and have like an integration activity, we talk a lot about what we just discussed and go into more of like the personal aspects of how this applies to us on like a personal energetic level and how we can really start to lean into the nervous system work. So definitely check that out if you're feeling called. We also have a place to connect with other be- other beings who are um, tapping into the energy readings and you can converse. We do integration activities. We do journal prompts throughout the month. And it's really a beautiful place for you to connect and be seen in your journey home to yourself, utilizing the energy of what is occurring over the next four weeks. Yeah, it's amazing. And there's a growing vault of um, breath work and meditations, guided breath work and meditation journeys, which is amazing, especially if you want that support in, um, you know, the nervous system stuff, any of it. And, um, of course we have these like live calls that happen too. So yeah, the energy reading I think is definitely really great because it's kind of like this episode is kind of like the collective, like macro scale of things. And then the energy readings we do are literally like channeled for the specific people in our Omi's Oasis in our community. So it definitely will hit for you on a personal level and help you to really make the most of, you know, the uh, energies happening in and around you for the month ahead. So, okay. The last point that I want to close on is it's really just like a reminder to know that I honestly think most people are coming from a very pure place in terms of when they arrive at their viewpoint or opinion or who they're going to vote for, like whatever the flavor it is, right? I really think that most people are doing the best that they can with the information that they have and beyond the information that they have, it's like, you know, yes, we all have a shadow side and an ego that can come out and, you know, drive our decisions. That of course is an aspect, but I really buy into a world where most people that you meet and that, you know, you think are this like horrible person, like they live in the state and they're, these people are problem of America and you meet them and you're like, oh, they're just a regular, you know, family guy who wants the best for his farm and he, whatever, or, oh, they live in a city and they go to yoga and they're doing the best. They're working hard at work and they have a great relationship and that's most people. And I think we forget that because we're so blinded by what, you know, the media would make people to be as, and it's, honestly not true. And I think we have to remember like, you know, asking yourself, well, how did you arrive at your opinion? How did you arrive at your perspective? And it's probably because you, you know, yes, you weighed some information. Sure. There's things you don't know. We all have blind spots, but it's probably because you're just trying your best and, you know, would like a good outcome for the world and for what you think is important. Most people are making decisions like that, truly. And it's, yes, there's a small percentage who maybe are making decisions out of, you know, wanting, something to happen at the, you know, uh, expense of somebody else. Of course that can exist, but I would really venture to say that most people are honestly doing what they think is right. And we all have that feeling innate to us that we are trying to do what we think is right. Even when our parents fuck something up, uh, fuck something up in the way they parented us, like they're essentially doing 
their best to a certain degree with what they know, with where their consciousness is at, with what's normalized in that time, right? With what their social group is saying is normal. So I think it's just a reminder to not literally dehumanize and demonize people for holding a different worldview because who is to say that we know where they're coming from, right? Like, again, sure, they could be having a bad intention, but most people that you meet are somewhere in there have a pureness and that's because we all have the light within us. Some people have just forgotten. Some people are more connected to it, but whether they're connected or not doesn't mean that it's not there, right? And just think about how you would want a friend to treat you, right? If they learn something about you is you would hope that they see you for your light, right? That is the best, most conscious, loving friendships and relationships is seeing each other's wholeness, no matter what the shadow or no matter, no matter what, right? That's what you were saying earlier, like unconditional love. And it's not easy to practice. It's a choice that we make, right? It's like a thing that we put into practice. And I think that's what this conversation is really hoping to inspire you all and us to do is really bring that consciousness to the areas, especially to the areas that you think that you're right and have it all sorted out, because those are probably the ones that there is a blind spot. There is something to learn. And I think for me personally, like that's just the world I want to live in is one where most people are doing things from a good place. And if they aren't, it's just that they forgot and they are innately whole and worthy and beautiful and they're on their path of whatever expression. And I'm not here to judge or decide if that is good or bad, right? I'm just here to observe and experience and focus on what I'm creating. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, oh, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for, yeah, really letting Nikki and I, I mean, obviously we're <laughs> choosing to do this, but there is something to be said for, I really appreciate the way that this community honestly gives us that support of, I've always felt so, free to share my voice and my perspective and all the things and to let it rip, you know, from a true, honest place, authentic place. So I really appreciate the, our community for that. And I think it's incredible and just also goes to show like how important it is to lead with like authenticity, right? Cause then you actually attract the people who have the consciousness of, who can hold, you know, all the multidimensional things and all of that. So point being, Thank you so much for listening. Truly, with all my being, I'm so grateful. We love you so much. And we are here alongside with you on this path. We are by no means perfect and have it all figured out. And that is something that we find important is to just know that like we're figuring it out as we go. And we are so grateful that you're here on the path with us too. So thank you for listening. If you found this helpful, this is definitely a great episode to share, to send out, blast out to your homies and friends and family. And definitely reach out to us if you have, you know, another perspective to share or something that really re resonated with you, whatever it is, let us know. We really love hearing from you guys and basically read out most every single DM <laughs> that we can. So yeah, that's it. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>